Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Aquarius New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 initiatives coordination group. Today, we continue our work following the cycles of the new moon to bring our joint intention to strengthen the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And today, our focus is on the Goal 17, Partnerships for the Goals. As we will work today, uh, meditating on this goal, we will bring into our focus the triangle of countries mentioned by Tibetan Master Joel Ku of Great Britain, Russia, and the United States. Expressed through the triangle of our presenters, who through their joint work and joint intention over to you, Rebecca. Please unmute yourself. Thank you, Alexander. Just reiterating our purpose, what we're doing with these monthly moon gatherings. So we gather each month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that's expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in... We cannot hear you, Rebecca. Uh, we apologize for the technical uh, problem on Rebecca's side. Let's just have a moment of silence, waiting for Rebecca to come back. So I will uh, pick up where Rebecca left, reading the, our paragraph of focused intention, summarizing our work. We gather once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good 
that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. This SDG thought forms help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of the new moon cycle and available astrological energies to distribute, radiate, and action on the physical plane. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vib vibrant activation, consolidation, and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. Over to you, Dot. Thank you, Alexander. As has been our practice now, as we continue our work together uh, month by month, we are going to name ourselves into the circle as our hearts unite across distance. And in order to do that, uh, thank you everyone for your welcome feedback month after month with this experiment. So we are changing the format of this just slightly and hopefully it will go a bit more smoothly. So beginning with presenters, uh, I will say the name and then if you will say your name and where you are calling in from, I will close that sharing with welcome to the name. Now, if more than 10 seconds go by, I will simply say welcome and we will move on. So on the webinar control panel, the very top, uh, you can expand your panel if you can't see it by clicking that orange arrow. Uh, at the very top, it says attendees. Just letting and you know that I'm back. Oh, Rebecca. Okay, well, will you kindly do this for us? Yeah, I just I had it worked out, so we'll see if that. So this might we we just had some feedback last time that people um, couldn't see the list of attendees. So um, you if, you may not be able to see it if your control panel's not expanded so that's what this slide is you just need to click that red arrow to expand out then on the next slide um can you show us the, oh i've got control of it okay so on the next slide it shows you where the microphone is where you would be muted by the organizer and then this other little um micro red microphone further to the right where you can unmute yourself um, and then on the next slide, Jesus, I think my computer's really, <laughs> there we go. Um, you can see the attendees list, these slides have all gone different in the formatting when we've sent them across, but um, you can see down here where my cursor is that um, underneath this top part of the control panel, there is an attendees list. It might look a little bit different on your screen, but there's an attendees list there that you can also click on. Um, and yeah, then you can unmute yourself up the top. So let's hope that makes it a little bit easier for everyone. And over to you again, Dot. Okay, okay. excellent. So, as we begin, uh, Rebecca, if you will kindly do this with me uh, to start, and then we will go to the uh, presenters list. So this is what it, it will sound like. Rebecca. Okay, then Rebecca will say, Rebecca Hood calling in from Queensland, Australia, and then I will say, Dot will say, 
welcome Rebecca, and then we will move on. So here we go, Alexandra. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Alexandra Radcliffe calling in from London, Great Britain. Daniela. Hello everyone, Daniela Nestorovic calling in from Belgium, Brussels. Darcy. Hello everyone, Darcy calling in from Washington DC, America. Welcome Alexandra, welcome Daniela, welcome Darcy. Dennis. Hello everyone. I am from Russia, St. Petersburg. Welcome, Dennis. Dot here calling in from Sydney, Australia. Martha. Hello, everybody. I'm Martha Gallagher from New York City, United States. Welcome, Martha. Alexander. Uh, I'm Alexandra and I'm joining from New York City. Anjali Thomas. Welcome, Anjali Thomas. Annette Ebbett. Hello. Nettie Abbott, calling in from Geraldine, New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. Annette Loeffler. Hello, I'm Annette Loeffler from Denmark, Europe. Welcome, Annette. Antoinette. Hi, I'm Antoinette. I'm from South Africa. Welcome, Antoinette. Avon. Avon Madison, San Francisco, U.S. Welcome, Avon. Betty. I'm Betty Fredrickson calling in from Denmark. Welcome, Betty. Berger. Hi, I'm Berger. Hi, Dot. And I'm Berger from Denmark, and I'm looking forward. Welcome, Berger. Bronwyn. Good morning, all. Bronwyn from Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Bronwyn. Cheryl. Welcome, Cheryl Binzen from Ames, Iowa, USA. Claire. Hi, everyone. This is Claire Bainon from Dunedin in New Zealand. Welcome, Claire. Deborah. Hi, I'm Deborah from Mount Vernon, Washington, USA. Welcome, Deborah. Eliza. Hello, everyone. I'm calling from southeast of Brazil in South America. Good well, day. <laughs> welcome, Eliza. Thank Greta. You. I'm Greta from Denmark. Hello. Welcome, Greta. Helena. Yes, welcome oh, and hello and greetings to everyone. I'm from Northern Foothills, uh, High Sierra Mountains. And welcome, Helena. Joe. Welcome, Joe. Joan. I'm Joan Mitchie from Washington, D.C., U.S. Welcome, Joan. Yoke. Hello, I'm Yoka from Belgium. Welcome, Yoka. Jose. Hi, I'm Jose Becerra from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Welcome, Jose. Julie. Hello, I'm Julie Meadows, and I'm from Lancashire in the United Kingdom. Welcome, Julie. Karen. Welcome, Karen Gritska. Lone. Hello, everyone. I am Lone from Denmark. 
Welcome, Loon. Lucy. Hello, I'm Lucy from Geneva, Switzerland. Welcome, Lucy. Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina Donadio, Tucson Desert, Arizona, USA. <laughs> Welcome, Maria Cristina. Michael. Blessings, everyone. Michael Stacy from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome, Michael. Olga. Good evening. I'm Olga de Lidiani from Athens, Greece. Welcome, Olga. Regina. Welcome, Regina Belkin. Richard. Welcome, Richard Hood, Queensland, Australia. Sheldon. Hello, friends. Uh, calling in from Northern California. <clears throat> Welcome, Sheldon. Tracy. Greetings, everyone. This is Tracy from the Detroit, Michigan area. Welcome, Tracy. Wendy. Welcome, Wendy Lees. And if there is anyone who wishes to name themselves in who did not get called, please do so now. Thank you. Back to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Dot. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hooray. <laughs> All right. So um, we're just going to um, move into an alignment now, which Alex is going to um, lead us in. So go ahead, Alex, and unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Wonderful. Wonderful gathering. Okay, we'll now take just a few moments of alignment together in which I will um, I'll include a shortened version of alignment used in the esoteric advent ritual and website. You're very soft, Alex. Okay, shall I say that again? Yeah. Thank okay. You. All right. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to take a few moments of alignment now. And I'm going to include a shortened version used in the Esoteric Advent Ritual and website. So remembering that to make all the SDGs a reality requires the participation of everyone from the physical through to the spiritual worlds. So let us participate and begin in the spirit of brotherhood and universality of Aquarius. By taking a deep breath and withdrawing our attention from the threefold personality and step into the presence of the soul. We align vertically with the beneficent inpouring energies from above. Beginning with the great cosmic center of the Pleiades, on down through the stars of Sirius and the great bear and the energies of the constellation Aquarius through the heart of the sun, the planetary agents, and to our earth, and the Lord of the world, in Shambhala,
and to the Christ and the hierarchy. And holding this potent, fiery, vertical alignment with ascending awareness and descending energies. Let us also align horizontally, reaching out to all of us who are gathered here around the globe and to all aspirants and disciples and people of goodwill working for the advancement of humanity. Aware that Aquarius governs circulatory flow. We can know that it's through these channels higher energies can flow through us and out into the world. So resting in the awareness of the warmth of this tangible connection as souls. Let us sit for a moment with this in silent and reverent wakefulness. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. And so we hand over now to Dennis, who will lead us in the stimulus section part of the webinar today. And Denise, please unmute yourself. I've... Dennis, I think we should be able to hear you. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. A developed person cannot live without a goal. The goal is an aspect of God. It is God who sets the goal in front of him. 
and thanks to his will reaches it. Where are all smart particles of God, the planetary logos, in whose ring past not, we live and move and have our being? There are great Kumaras who are the custodians of the goal, and those custodians of the will of God who recognize this goal and carry it through the use of will into the manifested body of our planet. The 21st century heralded a new stage in the development of, of humankind. For the first time in its history, it set a common concrete goal expressed in numbers and terms. This event will go down in the history of humanity under the title Millennium Goals. And we see the result. Whatever was intended was realized. Because the goal was set, it set the vector for successful development. The second stage of this project, the goals of sustainable development, looks even more encouraging since the previous stage of the experience has already been successfully implemented. The second stage is no longer a blueprint, but a much more comprehensive and seriously developed world scale project. And this is great because it shows how rapidly humanity is becoming receptive to the divine energies, the energies of Shambhala that channel the divine goal into the human kingdom. If you meditate on the content of this project, it can reveal some interesting ideas that shed light on the point of human evolution. But first, I would like to quote from DNA 2. There is also the demand upon all disciples to participate in the effort of humanity as a whole to take the first initiation with all the physical relinquishments and the agony that ever precedes the birth of the Christ in the heart of the individual. Only this time, it is the heart of all humanity. Preparatory to this first initiation, there has always to be individually and now collectively for the first time, the denial, the lower self, and the very fit acceptance by the personality of the loss of the, all the material factors which have held the soul a prisoner in the realm of time. Here, as well as in some other places, Tibetan clearly indicates that to us that humanity is facing the first initiation. The initiation in which the soul takes control over its physical vehicle. And therefore, this vehicle has already been sufficiently aligned within itself and cleansed for the soul energy to enter. And now, if you carefully look at all the goals of sustainable development, won't you think that the absolute majority of them related specifically to work with this physical vehicle of humanity? This slide you see provides us with a breakdown of the goals in the two specific areas of the physical development. Of course, we should bear in mind that this breakdown is conditional. The goals are, of course, inter interconnected, and the whole picture is more complicated. We shouldn't also view all the goals as directly solely at the development of the physical vehicle. 
as a disciple preparing for the first initiation has already sufficiently developed emotional and mental bodies and also works with them till the focus is in the physical body. It is not part of our task today to an analyze all of the goals, but just want to share our thoughts on the 17th goal, namely on the global partnership in achieving common goals. Uh, so, oh, yes, it will be. I'm sorry, just. Mm -hmm. Is it better? If we carefully examine all the 17th goals, we can see that almost all of them relate to the alignment, the alignment that occurs in the physical vehicle before the first initiation. Just look, the alignment is planned to be carried out at the most global levels, both within and between the states. Most of the targets of goal 17 are focused on alignment, and that's why goal 17 can rightly be considered as integrating all the others. Particular emphasis is placed on bringing developed countries up to the level of the developed ones. And this principle has been thought out from various sides, which speaks of the importance of the multifaceted global leveling to which the United Nations attached particular importance. And we see that the alignment achieved in the 17th goal namely the elimination of stagnation and energy jams occurs not only the level of the physical vehicle the need for such alignment is also being realized at the mental levels and several targets attended is paid to exchange of technologies and scientific cooperation the development of methods for solving and monitoring the implementation of tasks and implementation of goals. But nevertheless, humanity requires all the scientific achievements only to improve the state of the physical vehicle. We can see that out of all the SDGs, only one can be correlated with mental development. Humanity still has a long way to go before it can set a global goal related to the complex development of its mental body through the entire planet. In the same way it is approaching its physical body today. We can only guess about the components of these future goals though today we are already making a contribution to clearing the path in this direction. By the way, Aquarius is the sign of group relations. It is the desire to unite as a reflection of the energy of the soul of humankind, strongly stimulated by Jupiter, the esoteric ruler of Aquarius led to the desire for a partnership on a global scale. Uranus gives the ability to take these relations to a completely new technological level that so far exists only in science fiction films. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. And we'll 
we pass over to Martha now. Um, Thank you, Dennis, for the marvelous share. Thank you for speaking English, and I would like to lift up how beautiful your voice is in Russian. And someday we will be able to speak each other's language. Your sensibility for the sustainable development agenda is large. And I feel very honored <clears throat> to represent this triangle in friendship and trust. Russia, which carries the race personality, race six, and soul race seven, where the lowest and the highest meet, linking the two ways from the physical level and calling out for the mental level. USA carrying personality ray six and so ray two, where we may see the highest light, a quality of mind, finding ever expanding complexity as humanity moves through its first initiation. And I may say led largely by children. And Great Britain carrying personality ray one and so ray two, further ascending into spiritual recognitions, lighting the way. Quoting the Destiny of Nations, page 49. One might consider the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda to be very particular rendering of what 193 countries recognize as the task forward between 2015-2030. Today's goal 17 on building partnership, as Dennis rightly said, integrates them all. It began to take on real weight when, at the United Nations when Secretary General Kofi Annan incorporated the term in almost every speech he gave after 1995. He moved the term out of the informal usage of common sense into a more politically motivated strategy to forging peace. Moreover, we noticed that this particular goal is reviewed every year uh, by the high-level political forum, the assessment body for the goals, in contrast to the other goals who are assessed every four years. Today, in reference to the Goal 17, I thought we might focus upon the most intrinsic partnership embedded in the heart of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. And thank you, Alex, for changing to the next slide. I think 16 it is uh, on the uh, formula. It's a partnership called for between planet, people, and prosperity. This is not a new concept, but now a partnership that suggests new ways of strengthening leadership and improving strategic alliances that might save the human species from ultimate destruction. In the preamble of the agenda, we are told that the focus has gone from the traditional three pillars, planet, prosperity, and people, and has become five, with partnership and peace added to the already uh, established ones. We might look at it as an algebraic formula to grasp the direction this agenda will take to forge the future we want. It brings to mind what DK alluded to 75 years earlier when he reminded us the future of humanity depends upon its ability to construct right relations. And we know that this demands systems change. Here, partnership is the key to that kind of systems change. New partnerships describe living, coherent, interdependent, and ever-expanding relational entities 
that break up the crystallized accretions, crystallized accretions each pillar has accumulated. Consider, for example, the pillar on prosperity. In the past, when the International Monetary Fund and the World Banks were launched, it was assumed that the for-profit motive based upon increasing capital was good for everyone, despite the warnings of Karl Marx from Russia and Barbara Adams from the UK. So long as prosperity was disaggregated from people and planet, however, there was no evidence-based way to uncover the irrationality of this assumption. Linking them, however, brings to light the huge imbalance between the three that now exist. We can now more easily recognize through data gathering how continued growth measured by increasing capital has now become the basis for increasing disparity of wealth and the depletion of Earth's resources. While we've not turned a corner on the problem, we now have a greater ability to create seed thoughts which will produce more malleable forms because we have brought together planet, people, and prosperity. Now that prosperity is looked upon as a contingency with people and planetary health, we see opportunity to rethink how we might measure wealth in the future. Again, it's not a new thought, as David Corton caught up the United States finally when he pointed this out in the 70s. While it remains only implicitly embedded in the current agenda, the arising of creating partnerships renders the implicit of these relationships explicit. New shared cooperating practice of partnerships provide alternatives to these false assumptions about capital, and the people throughout the world gain more insight as to what must change. Before closing, let me just point out that since the 2030 Sustainable Agenda has come into force, huge agencies within the United Nations are finding ways to gather and exchange their data as a means of streamlining. It allows them to understand trends better and to bring a wider perspective of private public sector partnerships. Most importantly, the framework is opening doors to new ways of taking direct action. And I point to a marvelous uh, action called Bye Bye Plastic. It's one of thousands of partnerships between government and individuals, in this case, teenagers. Bye Bye Plastics originated in Bali, where in three years' time, they persuaded the government of Bali to ban the dumping of plastic in the oceans. Now the organization is worldwide. You can learn more about them by Googling buybuyplasticsbags.org. Here we see a steadfast and persistent force exerted by humanity to bring the future into an ever more urgently needed present. Thank you. Over to you, Alexandra. Hello. Thank you, Martha. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dennis, as well. As Martha said, won't it be lovely when we can all hear and speak in each other's languages? It was beautifully presented. And um, thank you both for your wonderful focus and care for these, for these SDGs. Um, it's been very interesting to study it and uh, this particular sustainable development goal and the role of Great Britain in it. Uh, the Department for International Development is particularly responsible for developing programs and working with other governments. Um, this goal, just as was said by both Moth and Dennis, requires us to look back over all the goals because it includes all of them or rather this goal is a prerequisite for all the others to function and to function well 
for global partnership is necessary for any part of the SDGs to become reality. So this is a global effort of the one humanity for the one world. And it requires the wealthy and powerful to care for the less fortunate. So speaking of partnership, oneness, and brotherhood is in keeping with the Aquarian theme of this period in the cycle as Aquarius rules universality. So I thought it was fitting to complete this section of the presentation by mentioning here that this year, on July 20th, the world will mark the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, the first space mission to land men on the moon. The Apollo space missions gifted the world with something that we see here that was not seen and fully appreciated before. In 1968, this first photo of Earthrise was published. And at the time, it was said to be the most influential environmental photograph ever taken. Following, in 1972, we saw the image called the Blue Marble, which is now known as the Blue Marble. There it is. These and other photographs from space have forever changed our perspective of what we are in the universe and our thinking about our beautiful, magical, fragile planet and our responsibility to it and its inhabitants. Imagine we who were born before this time did not grow up with these images in our consciousness as people do now. Neil Armstrong, who was the first man on the moon, said, quote, the Earth itself is a spacecraft, but it carries its crew on the outside instead of the inside. Looking at it from space, we should reconsider our mission in the universe. And like any crew on a spacecraft, you've got to be careful how you use your resources, how you use your crew, and how you treat the spacecraft itself." Unquote. And add to this the knowledge that our planet is rotating on its axis at a speed of a thousand miles per hour, whilst at the same time, we are revolving around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. And yet, we are graced with the ability to sit here still and quiet and reflect on these things. Did you know that the men on the moon carried with them a tiny silicon disc which had microscopically inscribed on it goodwill messages from leaders of 73 countries around the world. And I think a link is going to be posted to this NASA document so you can, you can view it yourself. We'll speak about that later. And thanks to Dot for finding this link. If you do get to view it, the messages, you may recognize the names of some of the leaders at that time who sent blessings and words of peace and hope for mankind to the moon at that time. People like Indira Gandhi, Pope Paul VI, Haile Selassie of Ethiopia, Chiang Kai-shek, and Pierre Trudeau. And one of Neil Armstrong's favorite messages, he said, was from Baudouin, the King of Belgium, who wrote, with awe, we consider the power with which man has been entrusted. We are deeply conscious of our responsibility to bring more justice and more happiness to mankind. All of the messages read like this, and the microchip remains resting today 
inside a special aluminium case on the moon's Mare Tranquillitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. Partnership flies in the face of nationalism, tribalism, isolationism, borders and walls and group distinctions. The astronauts noted that from space, one does not recognize these divisions. Edgar Mitchell, who was another moonwalking astronaut and founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences after his space mission, said that as he looked back on the fragile little sphere suspended in the cosmos, he had an epiphany, which he described as an overwhelming sense of universal connectedness, an ecstasy of unity, which he said was inexpressible. All the SDGs, and in particular this on partnership, are crucial first steps towards recognizing the wholeness of which all of the above speaks. The great ageless wisdom teacher Torquem Sardadarian wrote, in essence, nothing is separate. It's man who tries to separate the inseparable. All is related to all. Everything affects everything else. You don't even belong to yourself. You belong to the whole. The sense of universality makes you realize that in each living form, you are present. May the unity of all things be revealed to us. May we be aware of the oneness of life. May the beauty of oneness shine in our hearts. Thank you. I believe Martha is going to lead us now in meditation. Martha, you might need to unmute yourself. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Martha. There is an inexpressible practice available to us in this active meditation. Thank you, Coordinating Committee, Dot, Rebecca, and Alex. The meditation that we will do today will follow the traditional Asia's wisdom practice of group fusion alignment. So let us think of ourselves in our countries, in our nations, seeking to elevate them in the shared purpose and the one plan that will bring humanity through its first initiation. Let us affirm the fact of group fusion and integration within the heart center of the new group of world servers, mediating between hierarchy and humanity. We are one with our group brothers and sisters and children, and all that we have is theirs. May the love in our souls pour forth to them. May the strength which is in us lift and aid them. May the thoughts which our soul creates reach and encourage them.
Let us now project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kamara, the Christ at this heart of hierarchy, beyond Shambhala, up through the great bear, Sirius, the Pleiades. And let us take in the invocation for the United Nations up to the avatar of synthesis and beyond in partnership with the Christ. May the peace and the blessings of the Holy Ones pour forth over the worlds, rest upon the United Nations on the work and the workers protecting, purifying, energizing, and strengthening. There is a peace that passes understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that makes all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May the rhythm of that peace vibrate within the United Nations and in the heart of every worker. May the rhythm of that creative power resound within the United Nations and in the lives of all who serve there, awakening, transmuting, and giving birth to that which ought to be. May the chalice the United Nations is building become a focal point for the descent of spiritual force, which filling it and overflowing to the world draws toward itself all those whose work lies there. May the consciousness of the United Nations become ever more at one. The many lights, one light in the light of the divine self. May the aspiration and the dedication of the United Nations burn as a clear flame in the service of humanity and the Holy Ones. May the love and the light and the life of the one life pour through the United Nations, cleansing it from all evil and attracting all good. And we thank the School of Esoteric Studies for the creation of that invocation. Let us take a moment of silence, extending the line of light towards Shambhala and beyond. The center where the will of God is known. Higher interlude. Hold the contemplative mind open to the extraplanetary energies streaming into Shambhala through Aquarius, radiated through hierarchy. Endeavor to see the three planetary partnerships between Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity coming into alignment and interplay through the etheric web, through the mental, into the spiritual, into the grasp of the great one self, which we have all known.
and let us reflect on the seed thought, water of life are we, poured forth to those who thirst. And in precipitation, using the creative imagination, let us visualize the energies of light, of love, and the will to good pouring throughout the planet and becoming anchored on Earth in the physical plane centers through which the plane plan can manifest. Shambhala, hierarchy the Christ, the new group of world servers, men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. Let us strengthen in friendship and trust the relationship between Russia, the UK and the United States to do its duty, particularly through the rays two and seven. Let us refocus the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram of love. In the center of all love I stand. From that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. And let us visualize the power from Shambhala flowing through into humanity through this prepared channel. Consider how these inboring energies are establishing the pathway of light through the avatar of synthesis for the progression of world service in the company of all those of goodwill who, who are doing the work of the world server. And finally, as the great invocation is sounded, visualize the outpouring of light and love and power in partnership with the spiritual hierarchy through the five planetary inlets and more, irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth 
into the minds of men and women and children. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of all. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you so much, Martha. Just take a moment to change gears. As we move into the discussion section of the webinar. Remaining connected with the threads of light that have been built throughout the webinar as we bring through our thoughts and interplay to build a group field. Um, just checking my microphone. Um, not sure if that's any better. Much better, thank you. Okay. So, yes, I was saying just let's remain connected to all of those wonderful threads that have been built through the webinar as we bring through our thoughts in the discussion to build the group field. Um, um, and as we move into this section, I would also like to place into the circle Christine Thomas, who was not able to be here with us today and um, would have liked to be placed into the naming circle. But unfortunately, I was having a few difficulties at that place. So um, she is a, someone who 
very much um, loves the building of partnerships and peace in the world. So placing Christine in as well. Um, and so this is a time for everyone to share thoughts about this um, process of partnership that's building in order to bring through the sustainable development goals. So please, if you would like to speak, um, raise your, click the raise your hand in that, in the control panel to the left, um, or type a message um, into the question or chat box um, for us to read out. Um, so, yeah, any any other thoughts that you might have about partnership on all levels and how it can be encouraged and developed for the realization of these goals for humanity. Uh, yes, uh, this is Jose Becerra. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. First, thank you very much for uh, this uh, presentation. I want to add to the international flavor by saying muchas gracias in Spanish. And uh, particularly to Dennis Orlov, that's the way we pronounce your name in Spanish. Thank you. Muchas, muchas gracias. Uh, I want to uh, say that if you I've been aware of these uh, goals for many years now. Uh, uh, I have devoted uh, almost 20 years of my professional life to uh, the goal number 3.3 3, uh, under the ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. I was particularly in charge of coordinating the uh, objective to eliminate tuberculosis uh, we began to work on that even before the uh, SDGs uh, were created uh, by different objectives. And uh, I had the opportunity to, in fact, strengthen the hands of those uh, co-workers, uh, members of the new group of our servers uh, in, the, in Geneva and all over the world. So while we held uh, our meditations on Fridays, uh, for the United Nations. We, we did that for many years. Uh, at the same time, I was able to actually meet, greet, and strengthen the hands of those co-workers. So I've been on both sides of this uh, meditation. Uh, and it's wonderful uh, to find uh, uh, a group of co-workers uh, in that very same line of, uh, of work. Uh, uh, um, Alexandra uh, brought up the wonderful uh, photo of the blue marble and the fact uh, that uh, how we uh, landed on the moon uh, so many years ago and what that meant for humanity. I would like to uh, add uh, a further perspective on this. I, uh, I was born and raised in, in Puerto Rico and uh, I would like to add a layer of this uh, partnership we have uh, a radio telescope over there trying to build partnerships to uh, send I receive messages from the other side of the world. Uh, that's where the, the movie Contact was filmed. Uh, and uh, just wanted to throw in the fact that uh, from my small island of Puerto Rico, we are also building, trying to build new partnerships, in this case, cosmic partnerships on a more physical level beyond the telepathic rapport that we're trying to build with this kind of meditations. So again, thank you and congratulations for a wonderful webinar. Thank you. Jose. Yeah, Jose, it's, it's Martha uh, thanking you for reminding us um, of the good work that has gone there. And I know you can throw in as well the name of the most powerful telescope that lies on the northern shores 
because we often forget how important our neighbor, uh, sometimes island countries uh, are. I um, I'm aware that while the United States, while the Puerto Rico is a part of the United States, I love to think of it in its autonomy as well because of its uh, unique culture and um, it is a part of our family. Thank you. Alex here. Thank you, Jose. Thank you so much for all your practical, dedicated work and of a lifetime and for, for bringing this into this conversation. I'm not sorry that once upon a time I nominated you for president of the United States. So thank you. <laughs> I don't see any more hands raised at the moment. Um, and I can't see the chat box, so maybe dot and um, can't see much in it. Ah. I'm just wanting to check whether, um, whether participants can see the links from, from Alex and Doc that were posted into the chat box. <clears throat> is it okay that I have the time to speak a little? This is Berta from Denmark. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I, I will just note uh, here from Denmark, we've just been to a meeting that uh, once a year all the influencers and all the politicians, all the, the government, all the, all the government are meeting having a meeting, informal meeting, on a little island in Denmark. And this year, uh, they have um, the overall uh, theme or focus is the SDG goal. And they call it Global Focus. And um, so all the participants that would be about, uh, in all maybe 20,000, uh, but all the politicians and uh, the leaders of uh, Denmark will be there. And, and the funny thing is now that we're having a meeting about how to uh, have more focus on these goals uh, all over. And it's, um, I, I went to the meeting with another participant here today, Creative Farming, and when we were sat sitting there in this meeting room with all the people who are volunteer to, to make this meeting happen, it's it's um it's it's a it's a great joy to see uh, leaders of the country also to the Ministry of Finance talking passionately about uh, these uh, STD goals. So I think that it's um it's only 2019, and I think we will have a fantastic um, possibility to to work with this goal in the future ahead. And I, I'm, I'm really looking forward and I'm very happy to, to join in this group. Uh, and I will certainly be here further on uh, to, to work with these goals uh, very much. So, so thank you a lot. And thank you for the image and, and thank you for this. And I will, I will spread, the, spread, the, spread the word about the, this group. Thank you very much. We welcome everyone who would like to join the group field. This is Alex speaking again. I think we need more and more to hear from Denmark. Certainly from um, Great Britain's point of view, it's uh, held up to us as the model of democracy and happiness and partnership and I would love to hear more about what's going on there. Just putting that in. I'm wondering how Denise, Denise is going and whether anything needs to be translated, Sasha. Um, I want to say, um, it's this time we had 
taken over another experiment and uh, I'm uh, interpreting for Dennis as we go uh, on the background. Um, so uh, Dennis and Svetlana uh, listening and so they, um, if they will have any comments, I will uh, interpret uh, back into the circle for them. Thank you. Alexander, I see that Avon has her hand raised. Hello, this is Avon. This is just to follow on what was said. First of all, Tusen Tak. Um, during the pre preliminaries uh, uh, of the Millennium Development Goals, which were precedent to the, the Sustainable Development Agenda, Denmark was held up as one of the most extraordinary forerunner countries in uh, sustainability being brought forward by both the government and by the NGO uh, community working in concert with one another. And the World Con Conference on Sustainable Development was held in Copenhagen. And that was um, with the, the models being developed in Scandinavia, particularly in Denmark, being used as the um, as the as the kind of uh, actionable and implementable high points for guiding the conference, and just want to thank everyone who was presenting today for giving the most extraordinary perspectives on Sustainable Development Goal 17, and also to Martha for including that the overarching context for all of this is they all are building toward uh, a culture of peace for the benefit of all. Thank you. This is Martha. Thank you, Avon, for your long, long, steadfast, persistent service um, on behalf of the United Nations. Dennis, when Dennis spoke and was helping us to recognize that it's easier for countries to work on the physical levels and indeed the sustainable development agenda um, includes increased responsibility on the part of developed countries toward that end. I'm reminded of the fact that sometimes the more essential underlying purpose for these goals, which is what Alexandra was alluding to, our, our interrelationship with the cosmos itself, and that it's been perhaps not in in terms of humanity. The term culture of peace has been with us not for very long, maybe 40 years, 45 years. However, uh, it's a challenge in many ways to use the term because there's a sensitivity to the uh, the task of the first initiation, which is relinquishment, the relinquishment of our own personal identities, our own personal cultures, our own personal ways of living. So the note, the term culture of peace is quite different, quite more extraordinary than just the term peace itself. And um, we're getting there. But I think it's important for all of the world servers who are here today 
to acknowledge that that's probably the umbrella term to spread throughout the world in terms of understanding our interconnectedness. So I thank you for reminding us of that. We are drawing towards the time to close. So if anyone else would like to speak, please would you raise your hand now? And then do you want to say something? You might need to unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. This is Annette from this is Annette from Denmark. Just Hello. a little curiosity. Uh, Denmark has probably uh, the second ray and the seventh ray. Um, we talked about race before, so, well, I think it's, it's probably why we understand the, the, the UN goals. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move towards the close now. And Alexander, did you want to announce the next webinars and let us know what's happening? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, everyone. And uh, as we move forward and starting this um, new moon, we continue our work and we start the new cycle of reflection uh, leading to the next new moon. And this time, this month, this is the last goal that we've been uh, reflecting on in this cycle. In uh, For the last 17 months, Every month we would bring our attention to one of the goals. Next month, in under the sign of Pisces and the energies of Pisces, we invite everyone to have a ref, uh, pause, reflecting on all the goals together. What is the role of the goals in manifesting the plan? And then under the sign of Aries, in, we will start the new cycle. And it will be the third cycle, uh, us moving through 17 sustainable development goals. But we will talk more about that at the next uh, webinar. Uh, so as we start this new cycle of meditation, we uh, invite you to join us in meditation and reflecting uh, daily on the question of unfold of the role of the sustainable development goals in unfolding the divine plan. As we know the changes underway and reflect on the support that we provide to that through our meditation and our service. 
So let's meditate on this this month. The unfolding plan through the SDGs and our role. And then we would get together uh, for the next New Moon webinar on March 9th. And this time we will have Marco Toscana Rivalta from Italy, Marta Gallagher from the United States, and Sydney Goodwill Group coming together to focus our uh, meditation on the whole set of the 70s goals. So please mark your calendars March 9th. And before that, our next webinar will be on February 17th, and that also would be the last webinar in the cycle of the annual cycle, moving from Aries to Pisces, where each full moon we brought your focus to seed groups, and this time we will bring the focus to the group of telepathic communicators. And Kathy Newburn will share her thoughts and will lead us in meditation. Thank you very much for being together today in this circle. And I will pass the microphone to you, Dot. Yes. As we take a minute of silence now, our hearts united across distance, we hold a gentle group focus on the grace and gratitude flowing as we gather in support of the Sustainable Development Goals, part of the unfolding plan made manifest, realizing an ecstasy of unity. And we sound together the mantra. May the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's stay connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.